Hello everybody, Wheezy here, and today we are going to finish up the weapon tactic video for the SKS by going over uh, loadouts and then touching briefly on game modes. So first we'll uh, jump right into it. If you haven't seen the uh, gameplay tactics video accompanying this, uh, go check that out. But if you want to go straight to the loadouts, here's, uh, here's how we're going to go. So I'm, I'm going to highlight four loadouts, which are not completely dissimilar. I think the build on the SKS is pretty consistent, so I'm just going to show you what my preference is here. You're, I'll explain as I go why these are my preferences um, and why I think they complement the weapon so well, but obviously if you have a different play style then uh, you might want to switch things up, but this will give you a good baseline for how to kind of slot the SKS into its best possible uh, configuration. So. My first configuration I call Mr. Boom Boom, and what I've got on here is the Compensator, the 22-inch FSS Barrel, the GI Mini Reflex, the Merc Foregrip, and then I have FMJ, which honestly surprised me that I kept FMJ during the entire duration of when I was using the SKS, but I'll explain that here in a second. So let's start with the muzzle attachment. The reason I'm using the Compensator is the things that we're trying to control on the SKS is is the recoil um, so that we can do a faster rate of fire as well as the uh, to an extent as well the damage range so that so that you maximize the amount of damage that's being done. The strengths of this weapon are its damage, its headshot damage specifically and its ability to be fired relatively quickly even though it's a semi-automatic marksman rifle. So for my loud kit I use the compensator um, you could use the muzzle brake, but honestly I didn't find that there was much of a stabilization issue, meaning the recoil deviation on the SKS is vertical, not so much horizontal, so I think the compensator is the best choice for that. The reason we're choosing the 22 inch barrel is because in addition to increasing damage range, it also does recoil control, so this has the combo of of making the recoil more, recoil more controllable, allowing you faster follow-up shots while also maximizing the damage range of the SKS so that you can stretch how far those one-hit headshots go and how far those two and three hit body shots go. Um, if you try to switch up this weapon to get it to aim down sights faster and, and play as more of a close range weapon you're just going to kind of be missing the point of what the SKS does and I don't think you're going to be as happy with how it performs. The mini reflex is a personal preference. The reason I like this is because it's an optic which I find very useful on weapons. I don't, I don't, I find that the iron sights often get lost in the background, kind of a real, recent realization for me. Um, and the reason I choose the GI Mini Reflex is because it has the highest mobility of any of the optics. Um, it is tied with some of the other mini, mini optics. So like the, which one, there's another one. Oh, does this, I, no, this doesn't. I guess, I guess the SKS doesn't have the, there are a couple of other, uh, you know, micro reflex sights that are available on some of the assault rifles, but uh, apparently they are not available on the SKS, which means that the GI Mini Reflex is the f the fastest mobility, meaning the fastest aim down sight of any optic you can put on the SKS. So short of the iron sights, um, this is what I'd go with, and I'll go through these empty slots as well to explain why why I'm sticking with an optic. I don't think I don't think you should for forgo the optic on the SKS. The Merc foregrip again, recoil control, but this also. Uh, adds hip fire accuracy. You could go with the Ranger foregrip or the Operator foregrip just for the recoil control. I like the extra hip fire accuracy with the SKS because it's so powerful that at close range if you spam it and the recoil control and the, I'm sorry, the hip fire accuracy keeps those shots clustered, then you're actually going to have uh, decent success at close range with this. So I'd go with the Merc foregrip. And the reason I go with FMJ is to be honest in these other attachment slots, and I'll go through them here briefly, I didn't find anything that I thought, I, everything in those attachment slots I thought actively made the weapon worse. Um, so the next choice was to choose a perk, and of all the perks that are available, um, the one that I thought was the most useful was FMJ, because what that does is it allows you to um, fire through objects and keep more damage. What I found most often was effective about FMJ is I would, sometimes in gunfights you're, not necessarily walls you're shooting through, although people might duck behind cover, I find that there's randomly poles and, and miscellaneous items that somehow end up in the middle of your of your view when you're shooting at someone. And this actually 
I, I found quite a few times when FMJ was surprisingly effective, so I ended up just keeping it on. Um, so let's go through the attachments now. The TAC laser, this might be a good choice if you want to increase that ADS and you're not worried about giving your position away. I would probably trade this for FMJ. I didn't use this, and I don't like the lasers in general that are visible to the enemy because I don't like giving my spot away, and, and I have killed enemies so many times from spotting their green laser, and I don't want that happening to me. So this is one of those kind of things where you don't necessarily know if, uh, if you got killed because the enemy saw your laser. Um, sometimes you might, but I have killed enemies often enough from seeing their laser that I don't want that happening to me. The stock, you've got increased aiming stability, which you don't need. The SKS is pretty stable. Aiming stability, and then this one is, again, trying to make it... This decreases recoil control and increases aim down sights. So, again, this none of these, I think, contribute to maximizing the strengths of the SKS. So I didn't like any of those. And then for ammunition, the 30 round magazine, uh, it decreases your mobility, which means it'll make your aim down sight slower and your overall mobility slower. And I never found myself really wishing I had extra rounds in the magazine. 20 rounds with a two to three round kill to the body or a one round hit to the head. I never got in a fight where I felt like reloading killed me. Matter of fact, I can't remember hardly ever, if ever, getting in a fight where I ran out of ammo in the middle of it. The SKS, you're either going to die before you run out of ammo, or you're going to kill everyone and have plenty of time to reload. So the 30-round magazine I found wasn't useful. I didn't need it at all. And the 10-round magazine is not quite enough. So so that that's it. So given that those three, in my opinion, are kind of useless attachments, I stuck with FMJ, which, which again, surprised me, but what are you going to do? Um... I don't necessarily want to go in too much depth about my loadouts. For my assault class, I've started to really enjoy Quick Fix. The SKS is especially well suited to Quick Fix. What it does um, is it immediately activates health regeneration when you kill someone, and this weapon kills so quickly that if you encounter two or three people with the SKS, having your health regen starting immediately can actually be quite useful. So for my assault kits in general with pretty much every weapon, I've really fallen in love with Quick Fix. Um, Cold-Blooded is good if you're trying to avoid... Um, you know, obviously the, the enemy kill streaks, uh, EOD for objective types. We'll go over that in different ones, but for, for a, a purely Slayer kind of role, Quick Fix is, is, has become my go-to. Ghost feels pretty ubiquitous. Like, you just kind, I just kind of run Ghost essentially all the time. I don't find anything else in the Perk 2 slot particularly valuable. Um, and then Battle Hardened is kind of my go-to for my Assault Kit as well. Um, just being able to shrug off flash stuns, EMP, well, EMPs, yeah, the EMP drones, and then gas effects is very helpful. Um, so that's kind of my, my, my strategy for that. Secondary weapon, not as important with the SKS. Unlike the FAL, you're not going to find yourself really needing that secondary weapon. The SKS is pretty versatile. Um, for my objective kit, the loadout is the same as my assault kit. The only thing that I change, obviously, is my perk loadout and my lethal and tacticals. So for those of you who've been around a while, you know that my go-to objective setup is EOD and shrapnel because EOD allows me to get on the objective without being killed by grenade spam as, as easily. And then shrapnel gives me two molotovs. Um, and I like to use the molotovs as area denial, which is very helpful when, when trying to defend or capture an objective. Smoke grenade, same concept. You're trying to defend or capture an objective, it's good to be able to obscure your position. The stealth uh, kit, I think this is always very useful to have a setup. Um, this is good for Slayer game modes like Team Deathmatch or Kill Confirmed when you want to stay off the radar when you're firing your weapon, so uh, I really enjoy this. Um, this is my popper top uh, setup because I call it this because it's, it's a single hit kill uh, headshot, so you'll find yourself happening that a lot. Overall, the build is pretty much the same. Merc foregrip, 22-inch barrel, mini reflex, and the FMJ. The difference, obviously, instead of the compensator is the monolithic suppressor. And the monolithic suppressor, you get a little bit less recoil control than you do with the compensator, which is not a huge detriment to the SKS. It's already, we've already got two other attachments that are adding recoil control. Um, but what it does do is increases damage range. So this actually takes the already good damage of this thing at medium range and in extends it even slightly further at the cost of a little bit of aim down sight speed. And I, I don't think you'll really, I didn't really notice it that much. So 
the monolithic suppressor is is my go-to choice here you could use a different suppressor just to stay off the radar that isn't going to um, impact the mobility as much so maybe the tactical suppressor i wouldn't necessarily choose the lightweight suppressor you don't want to lose damage range on the sks um, so the monolithic just in general with suppressors the monolithic tends to be my choice especially on weapons where i want to extend the range of their damage so that's my uh, stealth kit of course with cold-blooded and ghost i have recently switched my perk three on my stealth kit away from tracker because i found I couldn't quickly determine which direction the footprints, the red footprints that are shown by Tracker are headed, and I found myself getting killed by Tracker as often as I was finding someone on Tracker. Um, and so I've switched to Tune Up, because what this does, since I'm always running Dead Silence, is it allows me to get Dead Silence a lot faster. So having a silent weapon and being able to use Dead Silence a significant portion of the time is extremely valuable. Um, and then the final kit I'm going to cover is my wheezy kit and this is just my overall if i'm going to kit out the sks to be maximally effective what am i going to do so here i've got the popper top set up which is because again increased damage as well as staying off the radar i prefer the monolith monolithic suppressor to the compensator this is what i would go even in the assault kit and the objective kit i i might i would probably run this build more often than not i don't there's not really enough of an object an a an advantage to the compensator and as much of a disadvantage to the monolithic suppressor i would pretty much choose the monolithic suppressor all the time uh, secondary weapon of choice i like a fast firing high capacity pistol um, like i said i'm really loving quick fix as the perk one especially if i'm just trying to maximize the damage i can do to the enemy um, ghost and battle hardened um, again i'm trading the tune-up for uh battle hardened because since I'm not going for a full stealth build here, getting Dead Silence is less of a priority and getting into a lot of fights is higher priority, so being able to shrug off flash stuns and EMPs um, I find more useful. Um, perk 3 I could probably be more flexible with. Grenade of choice, frag grenades, longer throw range for me, Simtex also a good choice, whatever works for your playstyle, whatever game mode you're playing. And then I've started to use the, the uh, matter of fact I would switch this to a stun, to a stun grenade. Um, I have recently found that the flash grenades wear off so quickly that they're essentially ineffective unless someone's directly in front of you and, you and you're shooting at them within one second of using the flash grenade. The effect of the flash grenade wears off so fast, I have, I have changed my opinion on the flash grenades and they are essentially useless. Um, so I've started using the stun grenades. I haven't seen uh, a whole lot of effectiveness from them yet, but... Um, I'm also not finding myself hitting someone with a stun grenade, going around the corner and getting instantly killed like I was starting to see with the flash grenade, where it was basically useless. I would flash someone, I would run into the room, and they would shoot me dead, and I would watch the kill cam, and the flash hit them completely, they went completely blind, whited out, and then it came back immediately. So, switch into the stuns. Um, <laughs> Captain, switch phasers to stun. So, that those are my, uh, my loadouts. I will, uh... Briefly kind of touch on what game modes I would suggest for um, for the SKS. Team Deathmatch is an excellent choice because of its high power and medium range. Uh, domination, the SKS is reasonably flexible. I would, I would totally uh, use it in Domination. Search and Destroy, um, I don't play much Search and Destroy, so I typically skip over this one, but I think the SKS would actually be a decent choice in there. Although, as I've said before, Search and Destroy is kind of a bring your best kit. So the SKS, I feel like, isn't one of the best weapons in the game, so probably not going to be one of your go-tos for Search and Destroy, but it could, it could hold its own. Headquarters, as I've said, unless you have a team, I would tend towards Hardpoint rather than Headquarters. The SKS isn't super strong at close range, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as a go-to for Hardpoint, although it can hold its own. Free-for-all is not a, not a horrible choice, although you'll, you'll find in Free-for-all you get more into close range battles, so probably the SKS not your best choice there. Capture the flag. The SKS has decently high mobility, good damage, so it's actually a decent weapon for, for capture the flag as well. Um, kill confirmed is also a great a great mode to use this in. So um, those are kind of the most common game modes. So that's what I tend to stick my recommendations to. But the SKS is is flexible and versatile and powerful. So it's a it's a, a good weapon to use in game modes where where you're basically just trying to slay the enemy and you have the opportunity not to primarily get into close quarters battles. So, 
Uh, hopefully you guys found that information useful. Hopefully that gives you a good baseline for uh, building your SKS around. And uh, if you want to combine this with, like I said, if you haven't seen my weapon tactics video that I've already posted for the SKS, go check that out. And I believe you will be able to see how this loadout combined with uh, the strategies that I give in that video combined to give you the best chance at being successful in Modern Warfare with the SKS. So talk to you guys later and uh, I hope you enjoyed.